Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cybersecurity Meg, and as always, I'm super stoked that you're here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about something I get asked about all the time. What are the main differences between working in internal cybersecurity and working in cybersecurity consulting? If you don't know, now you will know. I have worked in both. I spent about four years working in internal cybersecurity, all the way from being an associate cybersecurity analyst up to being the global cybersecurity incident response manager for a Fortune 100 organization. And then after that, for the past few years, I've been working in cybersecurity incident response consulting for another Fortune 100 organization. A lot of people are confused on what the differences are. Frankly, as someone who only worked in internal security for four years, I had no idea what consulting consisted of and what the difference was. And a lot of people are trying to garner an understanding of what the positives and negatives drawbacks might be to each one so that they can discern which one would be best for their career. So let's dive right into it. I'll give you all the information and pro tips that I have. So internal security versus security consulting. The first main difference I tell you is that there's obvious. Internal security, you're generally just working for one organization. You're helping that organization defend against the attackers, update their security policies, bolster their security infrastructure, et cetera, so that that singular organization can protect themselves. When you're doing security consulting, you could be working with a plethora of different clients. It could be anywhere from two clients all the way up to maybe 50. I haven't heard of anyone working with 50 different clients in security consulting at one time, but surely over a several year period, you're working with that many organizations. So what are the pluses and minuses of that? The plus, I think, of working in internal security for just one organization is that you are consistently dedicated to one thing, so you're able to see it through. I also felt like I had a lot of control when I was working in just doing internal security. I felt like I had a better grasp and knowledge of who I was working with within the organization. I have more contacts with the sysadmins, the dev team, the network team, the UI people. Everyone who worked in IT, all of the relevant stakeholders in the organization, I knew them really well because I was consistently working with them on a daily basis for projects that were ongoing. The difference between that and consulting, at least in my opinion, again, this is all opinion, is that when you're working in consulting, you seem to have a little bit less control, in my opinion. Yes, especially if you're working for a very reputable organization that has a great rapport, a lot of great history in the industry, your word, your opinion, your you know, facts-based or statistics-based recommendations to the client are going to be taken generally very seriously. They're going to be very well respected. But the issue is you don't work for that client at the end of the day. You work for the consulting firm that you're working for. So the clients, they don't have to take your recommendation to heart. You could tell that client, hey, you need to update your SPF, DMARC, and DKIM records as a number one priority because your largest attacks right now are coming from phishing. And if you don't do that, you're going to see, continue to see a trending increase in phishing attacks, which could eventually lead to you know, compromised accounts, etc. And then two months later, you could be handling a large scale incident for that same client solely because they didn't follow your recommendation of updating their SPF, DMARC, and DKIM records. So it's kind of a juxtaposition where you have all that respect from the client because you've done a lot of work in your consulting job, you have very intelligent clients, you have the certifications, the education, the experience to provide these tailored, detailed, very legitimate and practical recommendations, but at the end of the day, the client may not have the budget to carry out the recommendation, they may not have the resources, staffing, time, or they simply just don't care. Honestly, some clients just don't care and they do consulting assessments and whatnot to check a box. So that's something that I find to be really difficult about consulting is that you don't have as much control, in my opinion. I can tell all day long to a client over and over to do XYZ recommendations to bolster their security posture, and they may not do it. And then a few months later, you see that they had a large scale security incident. So there's that. One of the things that I know a lot of people are curious about in terms of internal security versus security consulting is pay. And I think that's a really interesting topic. <laughs> so in my experience, there are 
generally going to be higher pay when it comes to security consulting. Why is that? There's a very simple answer for that. Internal security, cybersecurity teams, they are a cost center. Like you are just spending money. Think about it. You are a part of the larger IT organization generally. You are spending thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars at large organizations for security tools, for staffing, to get great experienced personnel who are able to actually carry out the cybersecurity techniques, practices, and whatnot. So you're just charging money to the organization. You're spending their money. Whereas in cybersecurity consulting, you are making profit for the organization because you're generally charging several hundred dollars per hour for your consulting services. So cybersecurity consultants generally, I'd say eight times out of 10 are making more money than internal security folks. However, there's a very large nuance to that. The nuance to that, there are several, but the main one being if you work for a large tech company or a FinTech company, or maybe even a startup, right? If you're talking for a small, medium business, a mom and pop shop, you're probably not gonna get paid nearly as much as a security consultant. But if you're talking, you know, Bang, Facebook, Alphabet, Netflix, Google, or excuse me, Meta now instead of Facebook. If you're talking some of the big FinTech companies, if you're talking Silicon Valley startups, those are the organizations that are likely going to be paying similar, if not even higher salaries than cybersecurity consultants get. So that's something to take into your mind when you're trying to decide between internal security and security consulting. Some of the other differences that I wanted to talk about that are you know, compared between the two. A lot of people ask about stress. How is the stress between internal or consulting? Honestly, I think they're about the same. Internal security, because there's such a high sense of ownership over the organization, there's so much pride in working for the organization, you feel a protectiveness in your job, you know that you yourself as well as your teammates are in some ways highly responsible for the protection and security of the organization. So for me, it was really high stress, especially because at the time the organization I was working for I was working in management. I was the global incident response manager, so I felt a very high urgency, a lot of priority, a lot of pride in my job and what I was doing. And I certainly feel all those things now with consulting, but at the end of the day, the difference with consulting is, like I mentioned, you can make all the recommendations possible. You can tell the client to do A through Z to bolster their security posture, to help remediate an incident, to prevent it from reoccurring. And ultimately, it's up to them. So yeah, that's a large difference. Um, obviously, one of the huge differences in consulting, you have clients. In internal security, you don't have clients. So for me, a large difference going from internal security con to consulting was that in consulting, Sometimes it feels a little bit customer service. I mean, it's definitely customer service oriented, but sometimes it can feel kind of salesy, which I don't enjoy. There are never any direct sales going on. I'm not trying to directly make money, but I am always trying to think best for the client. If the client, you know, has said to me, oh, you know, we're having a high number of cybersecurity incidents and we're just not sure what procedures and processes to follow. We're just very disorganized during incidents. Then of course I'm gonna make the best recommendation to them of, oh, let's, let's help you make a cybersecurity incident response plan. Is it salesy? No, because it's something that the client genuinely needs that would help them, but still it can be difficult because you're talking in terms of getting them, having them sign a contract, having them pay money, which I'm not ever involved in. I only actually do the cybersecurity stuff, but there is kind of a crossover given that at my organization specifically, we have several clients that we specifically work with and we kind of help be their delivery lead to answer any questions, that kind of thing when it comes to their contracts that they have with the consulting firm. So that's another really big difference. Another huge difference that I was never aware of when I worked in internal security is that in consulting, and this is gonna be very logical once I explain it to you, in consulting, you have to bill your hours. So you're probably like, what does that mean, Meg? Do you, are you literally like billing clients directly for the work that you do and how do you discern how much money you bill them? Well, it really depends on which consulting firm you're working for, but the general concept of it is generally consulting firms have a set rate of how much a client is going to get billed contingent upon how long the contract is, how much history the client has with the firm, et cetera. So that can be you know, like a variable in discerning how much their rate is when it comes to consulting fees. 
But that's something that I never thought about when I was doing internal security. When I was doing internal security, I was just used to going about my week, never having to bill for anything. I didn't have any clients, just work for this one organization. Never really had to manage my time specifically in between different clients or think about, oh, I need to make sure to keep note of how much time I'm spending on each client, how much work I'm doing for each client so that I can properly bill at the end of the week. Whereas with consulting, I am, you know, making note every day. Oh, I spent 30 minutes writing all of this information for this one client. I spent four hours writing an after action report for another client. And then I have to keep accounting, accurate accounting at the end of the week and submit it so that the clients can be appropriately billed. So that's something that's new. And honestly, I think if you speak to anyone who works in consulting, they'll tell you it's kind of a frustrating part of it because it's not fun and you have to stay highly organized, which thankfully I am really organized, but it's, it's just something that I didn't know about until I got into consulting. Other than that, those are some of the main differences I can think of between internal security and consulting. If you ask me at the end of the day which one I prefer, they each have their positives and negatives. I think with doing internal security, you can get very bored. You're generally doing the same thing. You probably have the same issues. You're working for the same organization. Consulting, it can be exciting if you're given the opportunity to touch multiple different projects. For instance, I do a lot within my organization that I'm allowed to get my hands into. I do proactive or strategic consulting. So how can we prevent an incident from occurring within your organization? How can we prepare for an incident? I'm also doing like elevated risk monitoring. So after an incident, helping clients monitor within their endpoint detection uh, EDR solutions for any kind of alerts that might be related to an incident, that kind of thing. So you have the ability to get your hands into so many different things, which I think keeps it a little bit more exciting. But at times, perhaps it can also be a little bit overwhelming when you have everything available to you to learn about. Those are the main differences, in my opinion, between internal security and consulting. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any questions or you're curious about anything, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao!